Hello and welcome to Energy Storage Europe 2018. My name is Jonathan Gifford from PV Magazine. Well, over three days in March, 170 exhibitors from right across the energy storage ecosystem have been meeting here in Dusseldorf. And when I say across the ecosystem, I mean everything from flywheels to lithium ion batteries, large scale storage, residential, e mobility, sector coupling has been one of the key themes, redox flow batteries, and even power to gas. Over the next few minutes, I want to take you on a quick tour to see some of the key technology developments, new announcements and new business models that are affecting the world of energy storage. But of course, I'm not doing it by myself. I'm joined by Michael Fuss from PV Magazine Deutschland. Yeah, hi Jonathan, thank you. And yes, of course, we haven't visited all these 170 booths which are here at this trade fair, but we have visited quite a lot of them in the last two days. It was interesting, we will show you particularly some storage systems which will which can support electromobility char charging we will discuss about large scale storage technologies and systems we will show some power to gas developments and of course the discussion about sale production in europe let's go let's go so jonathan what do you see here well <sighs> We're here at Tesvolt on the um, Energy Storage Europe tour. We're actually at Tesvolt and last year's tour, and they've kind of continued to develop their their product portfolio. Um, this is the, the the new outdoor battery storage system from Tesvolt. You can see very heavy metal cabinet. Um, there's air conditioning, so it can protect the cells from temperature variations, and uh, the cells are all lined up inside. Um, can also withstand uh, things like salt spray if you're in a coastal area. And one of the use cases is if, if you're a commercial and industrial property and you just don't really have space in the building for a battery system. Yeah, but we had this discussion yesterday um, at the press conference of Tesla that of course if you can place it inside and you would place it inside it's really if you have the need to do that outside. Well and, and so. one place you, you completely can't avoid it is is on the street. So another application for this is you could place put a unit like this on the, on the footpath between two um, EV charging stations. So if two people have plugged in their cars, they're fast charging them, huge amount of demand uh, from the grid, peaky demand from the gri grid, this battery system can kind of buffer that and support the grid and allow those two EVs to charge at full blast. And this is really something what we see as a trend also at this trade fair because Tesla is not the only company who presented such a product. We have seen, for example, ADS Tech. ADS Tech has also presented a storage system which supports EV charging when the grid is too weak, so they can charge with 50 kilowatts and discharge with over 300 kilowatts. And um, also Schmidt has developed such a product and they you have some other USP. They are using a redox flow battery to do that because redox flow was really also a topic this year because people are discussing whether redox flow will be economically feasible now for storage applications which we see. And, and that's for longer term storage, isn't it? Yeah, that is what the people always say, that is for longer term storage. The question is how much longer should it be? And for example, there's some analysis from Apricom, consultancy Apricom, and they say that already beginning with three or four hours storage lengths, average storage length, it, it, there, there can be business cases. Um, okay. But by the way, you can read that in our storage special. <laughs> I'll make sure to do that. But when you're talking about really long storage, so seasonal storage, so from summer to winter, you really need another process, and that's where power to x comes in. Yeah, there we go now. We are here at our next stop, and it's already the stage behind hydrogen generation. It's the methanization, because meth it might be an advantage to produce to convert the hydrogen to methane because then you can feed it in the gas grid which we already have and you could do a lot of things with it we are here at electrocarrier because electrocarrier took part in our highlight ranking which we published in our energy storage highlight uh, special edition which we prepared in cooperation with energy storage Düsseldorf and we had 25 submissions and our jury they evaluated uh, this and Electrocarrier made the rank 5. Our jury said it's a really promising technology um, but it's more technology for after 2030. Obviously it has to be developed now but they say the large scale 
uh, implementation will be after 2030. But I think there's a lot of discussion about this point. Well, there's also a lot of discussion about uh, issues like efficiency. So the energy in, how much energy you get out, and also um, the, the business case for such a capital intensive investment. But there are some other interesting revenue streams that electrolyzers um, can benefit from. Um, one of them being frequency regulation, where you have uh, an electrolyzer such as this one um, on the grid and can actually can respond to frequency demands or frequency signals to help stabilize the grid. Yeah, and by the way, there are also companies here who claim that they can really profitably already now build electrolyzers next to solar power plants, for example, also in the US, and can produce hydrogen, which is competitive on the hydrogen market. I mean, there is a hydrogen market which exists, and there are prices, and they say they can do it. Well, it goes to show that energy storage is a really diverse technological landscape. And, and one of the key themes I mentioned earlier is sector coupling. So bringing together energy, transportation uh, and a whole different parts of, uh, of our economy. And we're going to touch on that with our next stop. So, Michael, on our next stop is something that piqued your interest, that caught your attention a little bit earlier today. Yes, I have been here at this booth, this joint booth of Alpic and Arcaso this morning, and I learned something about the sector coupling. They developed the technology for Alpic has developed the technology. They can de control the charging of electric vehicles con depending on the price of the electricity. I mean, maybe this is no rocket science, but they have a trial running in Austria where they have this time-dependent electricity prices. And they have also used this technology in a slightly different way to control the charging and discharging of batteries um, according to the voltage in the distribution grid. The voltage in the distribution grid is an indicator about how, how, the, how much load you have there. And so by doing that they can show, and they will publish a study in the next weeks, that they really reduce the, 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 the voltage peaks in the grid and can help stabilizing the distribution grid. And this is really what sector coupling is supposed to do. Wow, absolutely. So residential homes playing a role in stabilizing the grid. Well, that's a residential market. Let's look at the big stuff next, the utility scale battery storage using lithium ion. And our next stop on the tour actually was the winner of uh, your storage highlight special publication, Mikhail, in the utility scale storage space, Unicos. What, what really made it stand out from the crowd for, for your jury? Our five jury members, they really appreciated the submission because it's a combination of a bat utility scale battery storage with a, um, with, with a gas turbine, six megawatts, so it's not a tot very large one, but there, obviously there exists a lot of, let's say, already used uh, gas turbines in this order of magnitude and they developed together with Technische Werke Ludwigshafen, it's really a joint project of these builds, so one is utility, the other is, um, is Unicus. Um, they developed this project and they also want to sell it in the future and the idea is that you can shut down the gas turbine and use the battery for the grid services like balancing energy and so on, but for the longer duration balancing services you don't have to increase the battery capacity to infinity, but you can then ramp up the gas turbine. So this is really something for the transition period of the energy transition now. Wow. Well, here at Energy Storage Europe, um, Unicos, uh, with its parent company, Agreco, released a new uh, service, Storage as a Service, uh, where, where companies can actually rent a battery storage for a period of two to four years. They will have to pay for the setting up, the commissioning and decommissioning. But it could really open up some um, solar and storage opportunities on the edge of grid or even for off-grid industries. The typical one being mining. Um, what other kind of large-scale storage uh, highlights have you seen here at the show? Yeah, obviously there are many, many companies who present that. I mean, there's for example Fluence. Fluence is, a, is, a, is founded by Siemens and AES. They have merged their storage activities there and they, they are also doing large-scale, from CNI storage to large-scale storage, they do almost everything. Um, AES has the background as a utility and um, they have done something a bit special because they develop their, 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 their storage expertise which they say the utilities normally don't and of course now in order to be able to sell it also to other utilities they, they shouldn't act as utilities. So, and I think it's a really promising promising cooperation. And on the other hand we have SMA. SMA was also 
part of our highlight ranking. They are also ranked with another project very high and, and rank three. Our jury members were really convinced of this SMA solution. SMA itself claims that they have really fast reaction times and that's why they can really offer grid farming services for high quality grids. Well, the utility scale storage is really the big stuff, the stuff you see in the sea containers. But inside are the building blocks, the battery cells, key to lithium ion technology. And there is cell production here in Europe, so let's check out some of that now. Well, and these are the battery cells I was talking about, two different types of lithium ion cell uh, produced by German company BMZ. Yeah, I mean, they are not produced in Europe so far, but it's a, they, they let them produce in Asia. They rent lines and they develop the technology, they develop the recipes and they rent the lines there and they say they produce, they have something like 400 million pieces. It's really a bit. And they also are part of the consortium Terra E. This consortium, they are really important industry names in joining and they want to ramp up and sell production now also in Europe. They want to start in Q4 2019, which is only one and a half years by now, I would say. And they want to start, of course, a bit smaller, but then they want to ramp up to 34 gigawatt hours in 2027. Wow, big plans. Well, there are some manufacturers already producing in Europe, like Le Clanchet from uh, Switzerland. Yes, and we are also visited today another booth from, of Liacon. Liacon is a company which is in, the, in, in eastern Germany next to Dresden, and they say they would produce also cells in Germany now and start and ramp up. But the question is, Michael, like, why does it matter? Like, why produce cells in Europe? Why, why does that count? Yeah, in fact, this is really a discussion. Yesterday, we were at the press conference of Energy Europe, and there, Oban Windelin, who is the president of the German Storage Association, he made the point that, of course, bat battery cells make 20% of the value creation of, the, of, the, of a vehicle production. But, I mean, it's... 20% but also only 20% and much more value creation you have in the fuel at the moment I mean and this value creation at the moment is not in Europe but it's in the countries which have the petrol and I mean this you can take back with renewable energies. Well an optimistic future then I suppose for value creation and there are big plans from lots of different market players right across the energy storage ecosystem so many technologies innovations business models all emerging at great pace so thank you very much for joining our tour, tour here of energy storage Europe 2018 and we hope to see you next year. Yeah see you again.